Hello, thank you for watching today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I'm filming my wrap up for the month of May in which I wear, <laughs> in which I read four books. Um, I will just start and tell you what they were. So the first one that I read was one that's been on my TBR for years, a good uh, probably seven or eight years. And um, I was forcing myself to look back through my old TBRs and pick up some books I've had for years um, and to try and clear some of my backlog. Um, so the first book I read was this one called I Think I Love You by Alison Pearson and this is one that I had signed because um, I saw her there, I saw her at a book festival and that's when I bought the book. This is a story about two women called Petra and Sharon and it's set between 1974, 1974 when they're 13 and then 1998 when they're in their 30s, 30s I think. Um, and basically um, they are obsessed with David Cassidy. So the first, when they're 13, it's all about them and their sort of idolisation of David Cassidy and about um, a fan magazine that they're really into. And there's a man called Bill, Bill, who is um, basically writing the fan magazine as, as David Cassidy. So it's not actually him, obviously, that's writing it. Um, and all the fans think it is him. <clears throat> and then... There's a competition that the magazine hosts where you get to meet David Cassidy and the um, the girls win the competition but they never find out because um, Petra's mum is really, really strict and she steals the letter, which is their winning letter, and they find out in 1990, whatever, 1998, um, and then they meet up with Bill, so his story crosses with theirs, and they go to see David Cassidy. Now this is spoilers because it's all kind of on the back um i didn't really like this book um the 13 year old girl section i would have probably loved when i was that obsessed with take that back in the 90s now it just seems a little bit like mm -mm, to me um the section in the 90s i appreciated more because i remember that time period and they're the same age as i am now so they kind of feel a bit more relatable to me there were bits in it that I enjoyed, but it was a bit of a slog to get through it, to be honest. And um, probably should have DNF'd, but I didn't because I wanted to get to the 90s section. So I give it probably two stars, and even though it's a signed copy, I'm going to be giving it away to charity. The next book that I read was amazing. And it's one that I picked up in a charity shop really recently. I just wanted to read straight away. Um, and that is Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This is a book which is set in the States and it's in, oh gosh, um, I'm not actually sure what time period it's set in. It was first, it was written in 1937, but it wasn't published until it was discovered many years later. Um, it's written in dialect, which is great because you really hear the character's voices in your head as they're talking. And it focuses on a woman called Janie who is 16 and she's raised by her grandmother and she has this really wonderful connection with nature and she has um, just bigger aspirations and dreams than some of her family members do and she gets married off when she's 16 to a man who is her first husband and it follows her through her life with different men and through her friendships and through her her dreams really and when her dreams are realized when they're dashed um it talks a lot obviously about race in this time period it also explores racism within the african-american community as well which i didn't really know anything about that um some people are well in the book some people are racist towards other people based on how light or dark their skin is um so it also focuses on that as well and um, this was just written so beautifully, like every single word, every sentence is beautiful. And whoops, just dropped a book. Um, they're not like, um, they're not in any way kind of long, pompous, academic sentences, which are trying to be more than they are. They're just simple, beautiful writing where, a bit like how I'd say with Sarah Women, where it's just <laughs> another book on the floor. It's just like, 
they just don't need to use that many words to say what they want to say because each word is so perfect what they want to say that um that they don't need loads and loads and loads of long sentences and massive paragraphs and i just absolutely adored it i gave it five stars there's a film adaptation which was produced by oprah so i'd really like to see that um i've had a look online it's not available online i'd have to i'd have to buy it but i'd really like to see it so that was a fantastic read for me the next book that i read i did it's a buddy read with nancy who doesn't have her own channel but she is an active on booktube in comments and um we read together this book which is called to war with Whitaker by hermione ranfairly she is or was the uh, countess of ranfairly and this is her war diaries so this is from 1939 to 1945 basically her husband dan who is lord ranfairly he goes to fight in um north africa and he's not involved in active combat he's in what's called the yeomanry which i believe is to do with um horse um, on horses excuse me and she goes out there with him and she's not supposed to go with him because i didn't realize that the wives of military men were allowed to go with them when they went away to war apart from the yeomanry wives so she they try to catch her and deport her many times and she basically um this is her wartime experience where she gets jobs in secretarial roles and actually becomes quite um, high up in the the jobs that she does. And she travels throughout um, North Africa and the Middle East. Her husband Dan is taken prisoner fairly early on in the book, which it says on the back, it's not a spoiler. And he's taken to Italy and she is trying to follow him and try to be with him. And she is away for the whole of the war. and. This is basically her, her diary entries throughout the whole period. I got this book um, from my granddad, um, who was a prisoner of war in the Second World War in Japan. And so I can't I can't talk about it with him because sadly he's no longer with us. But I got the book from him and when I talked about it on one of my previous videos, Nancy messaged me and said she really thought that the book was right up her street. She managed to get a copy to the states and then we read it together and um, it generated a lot of discussion because neither of us knew much about this um this area of the world in the second world war and i didn't realize either how precarious our position was for quite a long time i think we were always kind of raised and educated in school to believe that it was we were always going to win the war and we were you know winning the whole time but actually it was quite precarious for quite a long time and you it's quite shocking in places um there's a lot of stories which are quite horrific in here and you know that there were things that really happened also her uh, there's a lot one thing that's a, a downside for me because it's quite grim at times um and it goes on for six years of grim you know grim war it does feel a bit of a slog sometimes um also there's a lot of characters because they're all the people that she worked with who she knows there's a lot of people who um you know she that are at parties and socializing and lunches and meetings and different things so there's a lot of people to kind of um try and work out who they are but to be honest it doesn't really matter if you forget who a lot of the minor sort of characters are um also the things she's such a positive person she's in really difficult times and difficult living conditions she's away from her husband he's a prisoner of war but she she really notices the animals the plants the flowers and she spends quite a lot of time describing how much these things cheer her she talks about um the the flowers and the plants and things that where she's staying and her views so she's got really some nice nature writing in here she has a parrot who she gets in um, baghdad who she calls coco and she has a little pet mouse as well and they both feature quite a lot in the book um Whitaker is their kind of butler type man who um he has gone out to war with them both so that's why to war with Whitaker in the in the title so this was really interesting Hermione is like a phenomenal woman she was she was so determined and so brave and she never gave up she never was seemed to be scared of anything she was so like just go for it she is really amazing and she has actually released another volume of diaries post-war so i'd really like to read those and there's some really nice photos in here as well about 
things and people that she talks about and a picture of her aged 80 in here as well she's actually died now she died a few years ago but um this was a really lovely um like I say lovely diaries and I learned a lot from reading it and it was really lovely to discuss it with Nancy as well um, and I gave this one four stars so that one took me quite a long time to read it took me about two weeks to read because like I say it's quite dense and so I really needed just like a palette cleanser after that and so the last book I read was a middle grade book which I remember from school and that is um The Wolves of Willoughby Chase by Jane Aiken so this book I got from the library because um, my daughter wanted to read it, who is five. And when we started reading it, it was just a little bit too old for her. Like the vocabulary was a little bit, um, a little bit harder than she can um, follow at the moment. So I decided that because I remembered it from school, I wanted to reread it. And I read it in a couple of days. It was really the kind of book I needed at the time, as like I say, as a bit of a palate cleanser. Um, it follows um, a little girl called Bonnie and her cousin called Sylvia. Bonnie lives in um, Willoughby Chase, which is a big manor house with her, her maid um, called Patton and her parents. And her parents have to go off on a voyage for her mother's house today. Um, employ a governess called Miss Slycarp who's a distant cousin and Sylvia comes from London who's, she's going to be raised in the house as well they're probably about 12-ish I'd say um, and Miss Slycarp turns out to be a complete monster she is basically wants to sell the furniture she wants to um, she wants to dismissal the servant she wants to take over the manor house and it's basically about the girls, how they cope there and what happens to them. So I can't really say more than that without spoiling it. This, I found out, is part of a series with lots and lots of books in. But I don't think that Sylvia and Bonnie are actually featured in the books in the future. So I don't think I'm actually going to be reading them. Um, but it was like, yeah, it was just lovely, um, real magical sort of childhood escapism. And I really enjoyed it. And I gave that four stars as well. So that was all the books that I read in the month of May. Um, I did a TBR video for May and actually none of those books were in there but I have started on that TBR now even though it's now June um, it was just because the, like I said, two always were to get it me longer than I expected and I needed something really light after that just to kind of, you know um, act as a start again kind of thing so tell me what you've been reading in May what's the best thing that you read? Have you read any of the books that I just talked about? And I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye.